Hi everyone and welcome to today's Chemistry Daily Booster. This is number 13 in our series and it is topic listed on the Advanced Information Topic List. It is listed for both foundation and higher tier chemistry students, so relevant to everyone. What we're going to be doing is having a look at the idea of redox reactions. Now, quite simply, a redox reaction is one where we have both reduction and oxidation happening at the same time. And the name kind of gives it away, because if you have a little look and we break down the word redox into those two parts, you have RED, which is our reduction, and then you've got the OX there, which is our oxidation. So redox reaction, quite simply, is a reduction and an oxidation happening at the same time, just different parts of the reaction. So what have we got? In the most basic terms, when we talk about reduction and oxidation, we're referring to oxygen, either loss or gain. So as far as reduction goes, then it is the loss of oxygen. So when we talk about reduction, it is the loss of oxygen. Whereas when we talk about oxidation, it's the opposite. It's the gain of oxygen. And that one does make sense, because if we have a look, oxidation and oxygen. So really what we're doing is if we oxidize something, we're adding oxygen to it. So gaining oxygen, oxidation makes sense. And then reduction, just the opposite, loss of oxygen. To help you understand this next bit, then I've given us an example of the thermite reaction. So in the thermite reaction, we start with aluminium and iron oxide, and we're going to make aluminium oxide and iron. Now, I have given us the balance symbol equation underneath as well, because that might make it easier to see what's happening. Hopefully, if we have a quick look, if we focus on the aluminium, first of all, we start with aluminium and we're then going to be making aluminium oxide. So if we go back to what we've said about oxygen, the aluminium is gaining oxygen. Therefore, it is oxidized. If we then have a look at the iron oxide, we then are going to form just iron. So iron oxide is losing oxygen, therefore it is reduced. There are two other terms we need to know here, and these are the ones that tend to trip people up. The terms are reducing agent and oxidizing agent. When we talk about a reducing agent, this is the one that's going to gain oxygen. And again, that's something that people trip up on because it may not follow logically in your heads. But reducing agent is the one that gains the oxygen. Whereas the oxidizing agent is the opposite. It's the one that loses the oxygen. But realistically, what we're doing in this redox reaction is we're transferring the oxygen from our iron oxide to the aluminium to make aluminium oxide. Hence redox, because we've got reduction, we have an oxidation, they're happening at the same time. This is one of those opportunities where those half equations can come back. So we've looked at half equations previously, so just a quick recap for us today. Remember, a half equation just shows the change that happens to one of the reactants. So we'll stick with the example we've been using for thermite. If we focus, first of all, on what happens to the aluminium then. So we start off with aluminium atoms, and then we're going to form our little compound here, which is going to be aluminium ions. So aluminium atoms, Al, is going to make our Al3 plus ions, and therefore we also need three electrons. So the aluminium must have lost those three electrons to make the aluminium ion. How do we know it's three plus if all we're given is a symbol equation? Well, we don't know aluminium because that's one of those transition metals. It could fall into a couple of different categories. So we don't know it. You could obviously take a guess, but I would guess that you'd probably put two plus. We need a way to work this out. And we do this because we do know the charge on an oxide ion. So when we're talking about oxygen as an oxide ion it is O2 minus. How do we know that? Because oxygen is in group six, has six electrons in the outer shell, needs two more to be obviously a full shell there. So it will always have a two minus charge. So if we look at our formula here, so we've got Al2O3, 
we've got three oxygens, three times two is six. So we've got six negative charges we need to get rid of. Remember, they have to cancel out when we've got a formula. Look how many aluminiums we've got, Al2. So all we need to do is six divided by two gives us three. So each aluminium ion must have a plus three charge on it. So you can work that out for anything that you're not familiar with. If we then have a look and see what happens with the iron, then we're going to start off with iron ions. So Fe3 plus, because if we look again, we've got three oxygens joined on to the two ions here. So charge must be three plus. They're going to have to gain three electrons to make the iron atoms. If we now just go into a slightly different way to think about oxidation and reduction, there's this little acronym we can learn here, oil rig. So oil rig just stands for oxidation is the loss of electrons, reduction is the gain of electrons. So any time that we are losing electrons, that thing is being oxidized. If we are gaining electrons, it would be a reduction. So let's have a look at our examples that we've just written down. So we'll start off with our aluminium. So we start off with aluminium atoms, and then they are going to lose three electrons to become aluminium ions. So oxidation is the loss of electrons. Therefore, we have an oxidation reaction. For the iron ions, they are gaining three electrons. Therefore, reduction is gain of electrons. That is the reduction. So together, we have both a reduction and an oxidation happening. It is a redox reaction overall. Final thing to do for today then is head on over and have a go at the quiz, see how well you've understood the concepts we've recapped on today. Obviously, if there are bits you're still not 100% certain on, then it's worth having a little look in them in more depth. So use the video on the main channel or obviously your revision guides. Just have some practice. Look at those past exam papers and just flick through them until you find half equation questions. Have a go. Check the mark schemes because they're all on the OCR website. So do make use of that where you can just to double check your understanding of concepts you're not as confident in. Don't forget to join us again tomorrow for our next Chemistry Daily Booster.